The Seattle gallery scene recently welcomed a new kid to the block. It's called Jay Reinhardt Gallery. And here to talk about the mission and the vision is founder and owner Judith Reinhardt. Hello. Hi. hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, you have a long history working in art galleries. Um, Foster White, correct, mm -hmm. in Pioneer Square, and Winston Walker in South Lake Union. Yep. So what made you decide, hey, I want to open my <laughs> own place? <laughs> um, there were a lot of there are a lot of factors. I think um, professionally, it just felt like the next step. Mm -hmm. um, among the gallery community, we've, we've lost a number of galleries over the years for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing all of these artists that didn't have a home. And I went, well, I think now's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I made that leap. I started to talk to the artists that I knew and wanted them to show. Yeah. And I was surprised at the, the level of excitement that was was being directed kind of, of coming like yes way. let's do it mm -hmm. i love this line from your gallery mission statement we deal in the art of falling in love with art explain what that means um <laughs> i i've watched people fall in love with art mm. for years and i've fallen in love with art yeah over time where you walk into a gallery and you see a piece of art in you person just, you hone in and you hone in and you just have this feeling of I have fallen in love with it. I gotta have I've it. I've gotta have it. And I, I've watched this over the years. Seasoned collectors who know that that's what they're doing to you know young collectors who this might be their first piece of art they've ever bought. Mm -hmm. And then it opens up this whole new world. Mm -hmm. Well, you have uh, a roster of 16 artists. Jane Reinhardt has 16. How did you choose this particular group of 16? And, and by the way, it's, it's a great roster. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, I think it started as what what I was seeing of like where these artists should be and then as I kind of started talking to them and developing the the gallery and developing the aesthetic it came down to process mm. every single one of my artists have some kind of process heavy like a practice oh, interesting. there's a photographer who takes tiny little photographs of plants from her garden that she grows mm. and then digitally collages them together so it's this year-long process and cycle of growing and photographing and collaging. I love that in a world where everything is so fast and immediate, everything's slowed down. Mm -hmm. And then I have a couple of painters who are just working the canvas and painting and removing and adding and, and removing and scraping mm -hmm. and, and creating something that's that's not just this immediate thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And even um, a couple of the printmakers I show, in order to get the plate that they're printing of on, it's this super technical process that mm -hmm. took years and years to develop and then to actually be able to just do it in that one instance mm -hmm. is incredibly difficult. So you obviously believe in these artists that you yes. represent. So if an artist's work does not sell, how do you handle that as a business person? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah, because yeah. um, I tell artists that, uh, you know, the, the relationship with the gallery is all like, a, it's a marriage, it's a partnership. Like, mm -hmm. that's the end goal is we're here to promote and sell your work. Mm -hmm. And I've not had an instant yet in my, in my career of like, okay, we need to have that, that moment of, is this working, is it not? Right. Do we break up, do we not? And also giving artists freedom of like, if I'm not selling your work, mm -hmm. I'm not doing you any favors. Mm -hmm. Where can you sell your work? Mm -hmm. It's not about just only sells here. Yeah. It's like, I wanna make it work for you mm -hmm. somewhere if it's yeah. not here. So you've created a living room in the center of your gallery. There's mm -hmm. a couch, chairs, coffee yeah. table. Uh, it, very homey vibe. What what was uh, behind that design decision? So that decision was uh, was was very deliberate in that I live with art, mm -hmm. and most of us live with art. Yeah. And how do I envision artwork in my home? Most galleries uh, by design have. Uh, it's a very white walls. It's a big space. It can you be walk intimidating. In, it can be very intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's hard to imagine a painting on a, a giant white wall, how that could fit into your space. Right. And then also I think it gives it a very comfortable space. If you can come in, you can have a sit, you mm -hmm. can have a cup of coffee and look at the art mm -hmm. and it invites conversation um, and community. Yeah, it's a nice feel. All right, I'm gonna go over a few common misconceptions mm -hmm. about visiting a gallery, yeah. okay? Number one, you have to buy something if you go into a gallery. No, no, not, no. not true at all, Not right? true at all. Just go in and look. All right, number two, if you don't like a piece of art, it must be good. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, no. <laughs> um, art, it's, it's very subjective. It's what you love. You have to know about art. No. No. You don't have to be educated. Yeah. You, ha you have to be willing to walk into a space mm -hmm. and feel something. Mm -hmm. Uh, four, and you kind of already touched on this, you can't ask questions. Of course you can ask questions. Of course questions. you can ask questions. Right. Yeah. I spend months and months reading up on this one exhibition that I'm putting on. Mm -hmm. Ask me all the questions because right. I have You're going to know. Right. And finally, gallery owners want to make you feel stupid. I hope not. <laughs> I think that's one of those things yeah. that people think like, oh, they're looking to kind of make no. me feel like I'm not smart or no, I'm not good. No, or, no, yeah. not at all. Yeah. Um, I think mean, quite the opposite. I mean, if, if you want an education, I'm happy to give you an education. If you right. want to just come in and look and leave, sit on the couch, come and sit on have the couch. Have a cup of coffee, that's sit on the couch, fine. and just look around. Yeah. 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 Why is it important to own original art? Oh, I think owning original art is. Uh, it's this visceral experience of, mm -hmm. I mean, it goes back to falling in love with it. That This is a unique piece that somebody made with their hands mm -hmm. and by bringing that into your home, it, it gives you a connection to that person. It gives you a connection to the art world. It helps you kind of understand the importance of um, uh, real things mm -hmm. and the, the reality of things. And a connection to yourself. Connection to of yourself. What appeals to yeah. you, what draws you. Having this, having like a wall of things that you love is yeah. very exciting. It is, <laughs> it's very exciting. Well, the Seattle, we're delighted that you have opened your doors. It's okay. really wonderful to have you in the city. Uh, Jay Reinhardt Gallery is open Tuesday through Saturday and their current show, Salon Style, features 10 of the gallery's artists it is up now through December 21st. Well, thank you so much, Judith. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers to you. Cheers to art. Cheers to originality. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> you want some of mine? It's, it's vodka. Yeah. <laughs> you <Even> better. <laughs>